In this video, I will show you the operation of TTL NAND gate with totempole output structure as the circuit is a NAND gate circuit. Therefore, if any of the inputs is at logic 0, our output will be 1 and for 1 1, our output will be 0. See, this is the circuit structure of TTL NAND gate. Okay, we can divide the total circuit schematic into three different segments. This side is known as input segment or input stage. This side is known as phase splitter stage. And this side is known as output stage. This is phase splitter. Now look at the input stage. Here you will see at the input side we have a transistor Q1. This is an NPN transistor and this is a multi emitter transistor. And here you will see this transistor has total two input terminals. Here you will see the emitter terminal of the transistor Q1 is equal to 2. That means the TTL NAND gate will be a 2 input TTL NAND gate with totempole structure. The number of input will be equal to the number of emitter terminals. If I need a 3 input TTL NAND gate, I will draw another emitter terminal from this Q1 structure. Here you will see the collector terminal of the transistor Q1 will be connected with the base terminal of the transistor Q2 and the transistor Q2 will act as a phase splitter. Here the transistor Q2 will act as a switch by using the switching action of the transistor Q2. Here you will see when the base terminal of the transistor Q3 will be at logic 0 or at low state, the base terminal of the transistor will be at logic 1 or at high state. Or if the base terminal of the transistor Q3 is at high voltage or at a logic 1 state, you will see the base terminal of the transistor Q4 will be at low state. This is how it splits the logical 0 and logical 1 phase. When this will be at logic 0 or low state, this will be at high state. And when this will be at high state, this will be at low state. This is how it splits the logical phase. Now look at this output stage. Here you will see the transistor Q3 is placed on top of the transistor Q4. Therefore, this will be a totempole structure. And the resistor R4, the transistor Q3, the diode D1, and the transistor Q4 will form our totempole structure as indicated by this red rectangle. Here you will see we will take the output from this terminal of the transistor Q4 or the collector terminal of the transistor Q4 as we are taking the output from the totempole structure or the totempole portion of the circuit. Therefore, this will be known as TTL NAND gate with totempole circuit structure. See the transistor Q1 is a multimeter transistor. With this kind of circuit structure, the circuit analysis will be very complicated. Therefore, I will replace the transistor Q1 with its diode equivalent circuit. Now, let me show you the diode equivalent circuit of a multi emitter transistor. At first, you have to understand the structure of a multi emitter transistor. See, this is the structure of a 3 input or 3 emitter terminal multi emitter transistor. This N type semiconductor will represent the collector terminal, this will represent the base terminal, and this section will represent the emitter terminal. But in the emitter section, we will have total three n type semiconductors see at first we will deposit a n type semiconductor here up so this will be our emitter terminal one after that we will deposit a separation layer after that there will be another n type layer and this will be our emitter terminal two after that we will have a separation layer after that we will deposit another n type layer so the three n type layer will indicate three emitter terminals. This is how we can deposit total 8 emitter terminals in a multimeter bipolar junction transistor. That means a TTL NAND gate can take maximum 8 inputs into it. Okay. 
see this will represent the multimeter transistor q1 here we will have two input terminals therefore i will take two emitter terminals this n type semiconductor will represent the collector terminal this p type semiconductor will represent the p type base and this will indicate the emitter one which i will indicate with input a and there will be a separation layer after that we will deposit this n layer so this will indicate emitter two or our input terminal b okay now see i will replace this q1 npn transistor multimeter transistor two emitter terminals with its diode equivalent circuit see i have a p type semiconductor here and n type semiconductor here so there will be a depletion layer or pn junction between this p and n type region therefore i can replace this p n junction with a diode let's say i will denote that diode with d4 between base b1 to collector terminal i will get a p n junction diode which will be d4 okay now see between this p type semiconductor and this n type semiconductor there will be another p n junction let's say between b1 and input a terminal or this emitter e1 i will denote that with diode d2 and see here between this p type region and this n type region there will be another depletion region therefore i will get another p n junction let's say i will denote that with diode d3 so between this b1 to input a i will get the diode d2 or this p n junction will be replaced with the diode d2 between this b1 to collector terminal i will get this pn junction i will replace that with diode d4 and between this p type and this n type semiconductor i will get this pn junction and i will replace that with diode d3 and this diode circuit will be the diode equivalent circuit of the multimeter transistor q1 therefore if in the original circuit i replace the transistor with its diode equivalent circuit i will get a circuit like this this is the input side between base b1 to a terminal diode d2 between b1 to input b diode d3 and between b1 to collector c i will get diode d4 and the base terminal of the transistor q1 will be connected with the resistor r1 and collector will be connected with the base terminal of the transistor q2 so this portion inside the red rectangle will indicate the diode equivalent circuit of transistor q1 now let me discuss the operation of ttl nand gate with totem pole output structure see this will be the ttl totem pole nand gate if we replace the transistor q1 which is the diode equivalent circuit okay see this transistor q2 will act as phase splitter that means when it will keep the transistor q3 in on state q4 will be in off state or when the transistor q2 will keep this transistor into off state this will be in on state as the transistor q2 acts as a switch therefore let me talk about the on state and off state condition of the transistor q2 see if i want to turn on the transistor q2 there must be a base current and if i want to flow the base current through the base terminal of the transistor q2 our diode d4 or the base to collector junction of the transistor q1 must be in the on state and when you will see the transistor q2 will be in on state it will supply emitter current ie in this direction and that emitter current ie2 will divide into two portion one will go in this direction and another will go in this direction let's say i will denote that Volt current with IB4 and this current as I3 and I will denote this current with IB4 here you will see when this I2 will flow through the emitter terminal of the transistor Q2 it will it will cause a current I3 flowing in the circuit and here you will see this I3 will cause a voltage drop of I3 R3 which will keep the transistor Q4 in on state what i want to say is that if the transistor q2 is in on state its emitter current will supply sufficient voltage at the base terminal of the transistor q4 so it will be in on state if i denote this terminal with x let's say the voltage at this point is v x now what should be the value of vx if i want to turn on the transistor q2 to turn on the transistor q2 the diode d4 or the base to collector junction of the transistor must be in forward bias so our vx will be the algebraic sum of base to collector voltage base to emitter voltage of the transistor q2 plus base to emitter 
junction voltage of the transistor Q4. So see, if I want to turn on the transistor Q2, I have to supply sufficient voltage which will keep the base to collector of Q1 in forward bias. Therefore, transistor Q2 will be in on state and when it will be in on state, the transistor Q4 will also be in on state. Therefore, I will denote the base to emitter junction voltage of the transistor Q2 as VE2 base to emitter junction voltage of transistor Q4 as VBE4 therefore we need a voltage equal to VBC1 let's say equal to 0.7 volt if I turn the transistor Q4 in on state therefore let's say base to emitter junction voltage will be 0.8 volt and if I turn on the transistor Q4 let's say base to emitter junction voltage will also be 0.8 volt therefore you will see if I want to turn on the transistor Q2 we need to supply a voltage 0.8 plus 0.8 plus 0.7 Vx must be equal to 2.3 volt if Vx is not 2.3 volt I will say that the transistor Q2 will be in off state now consider the first case when our input A will be at logic 0 and our input B will be at logic 0 that means this terminal will be connected to this ground terminal and this A terminal will be connected to this ground terminal A is at logic 0 and this B is at logic 0 therefore you will see the positive terminal of this 5 volt source will be connected with the base terminal of the transistor Q1 through the resistor of 5 kilo ohm or R1 and the negative terminal will be connected with the N type emitter or with the input terminals therefore you will see both the diode D2 and D3 will be in forward bias as a result I can replace the base to emitter junction of the transistor Q1 with therefore I can easily replace the base to emitter junction of transistor Q1 with 0.7 volt source because when base to emitter junction is in forward bias voltage across base to emitter junction is approximately 0.7 volt ok see after replacing the base to emitter junctions with 0.7 volt source the voltage between this terminal to this ground terminal will be 0.7 volt as indicated by the voltage sources therefore you will see to turn on the transistor Q2 we need a voltage at least 2.3 volt so our transistor Q2 will be in off state when the transistor Q2 will be in off state its collector and emitter terminals will act like open switch so I can easily disconnect the collector and emitter terminals as a result you will see IE2 will be equal to 0 therefore you will see the current in this direction I3 will be equal to 0 so I3 R3 voltage drop will be equal to 0 so you will see our transistor Q4 will be in off state because its base to emitter junction will not be in forward bias it will be in off state therefore its collector and emitter terminals will also act like open switch so I can disconnect the collector and emitter terminals ok therefore the base current IB4 will also be equal to 0 now see when this transistor will be in off state you will see this this 5 volt will supply a current at the base terminal of the transistor Q3 so it will be in on state therefore you will see I will get a collector current IC3 to the collector and emitter terminals of the transistor Q3 and when it will be in on state its collector and emitter terminals will get shorted now see when this transistor will be in on state due to this IC3 I will get IC3 R4 drop across this 130 ohm resistor I will get a voltage drop of 0.2 between this collector to emitter terminals which is the saturation voltage and when we will get IC3 you will see there will be an emitter current flowing in this collector terminal in this emitter terminal so our IE will flow through the diode and when the IE will flow through the diode D1 will also be in on state so the voltage across this diode D1 will be 0.7 volt approximately so you will see the voltage at this terminal will be this VCC minus IC1 R4 drop VCC minus IC sorry IC3 R4 drop minus VCE set drop minus VD1 drop so this will be around 3.4 to 3.8 volt which indicates logic 1 at the output to ground terminals now let me consider this case when A will be at logic 0 and B will be at logic 1 
therefore you will see I will apply plus 5 volt between this terminal to this terminal and you will see the positive terminal of this 5 volt will be connected with the N side of the diode D3 or the emitter terminal 2 and the negative terminal will be connected with the P type base therefore this D3 will be in reverse bias or base to emitter junction will be in reverse bias so I can easily replace them with open circuit now see as A is at logic 0 that means I will connect A terminal with ground terminal when I will connect it with ground terminal you will see positive terminal of this 5 volt will be connected with the P side and the negative terminal will be connected with the N side so the diode D2 will be in on state or in forward bias therefore you will see I will get a voltage of 0 0.7 volt between this terminal to ground terminal voltage at this point is equal to 0.7 this indicates that the transistor Q2 will be in off state when this transistor will be in off state its collector and emitter terminals will act like open switch so I can disconnect the collector and emitter terminals which will make emitter current IE2 equal to 0 therefore you will see this I3 will be equal to 0 I3 R3 will also be equal to 0 so as the base to emitter junction of the transistor as the base to emitter junction voltage of the transistor Q4 is 0 therefore it will be in off state when it will be in off state its collector and emitter terminals will act like open switch so I can disconnect the collector and emitter terminals from the given circuit therefore you will see this 5 volt will supply a base current at the base terminal of the transistor Q3 therefore the transistor Q3 will be in on state when transistor Q3 will be in on state I will get IC3 current through this path this IC3 current will cause a voltage of IC3 R4 from this terminal to this collector terminal and as this is in on state I will get VCE set here which is around 0 0.2 volt ok and you will see as we will get emitter current here IE that current will flow through the diode D1 therefore the diode D1 must be in on state or in forward bias therefore you will see our output voltage VO will be equal to VCC VCC minus IC3 R4 IC3 R4 minus VCE set 0.2 volt and VD1 which will be around 0.7 volt so it will be at logic 1 because the voltage will be 3.4 to 3.8 volt ok now let me talk about the last case when A will be at logic 1 that means I will apply plus 5 volt between this terminal to ground terminal and our V will be at logic 1 that means I will connect another plus 5 volt between this terminal to ground terminal therefore you will see the plus terminal of the 5 volts will be connected with the N side or the N type emitter of the transistor Q1 and the N negative terminal will be connected with the P type base therefore you will see the diode D2 and D3 they will be in reverse bias or the base to emitter junction of the transistor Q1 will be in reverse bias as the base to emitter junction of the transistor Q1 will be in reverse bias I can replace them with open circuit ok now let me replace the base to emitter junctions with open circuit see after removing the base to emitter junction you will see between this terminal to this ground terminal I will get a voltage of around 2.3 volt and that 2.3 volt is sufficient to drive the transistor Q2 in on state and when the transistor Q2 will be in on state its collector and emitter terminals will act like a close switch so I can easily short the collector and emitter terminals therefore you will see this 5 volt voltage will be absorbed by this 1.6 kilo ohm resistor and this 1 kilo ohm resistor so if I want to calculate the I3 R3 drop I3 R3 drop will be equal to I will simply use voltage divider rule 1 kilo divided by 1 kilo plus 1.6 kilo
into 5 this will be equal to around 1.92 volt that means if I get this 1.92 volt between the base to emitter terminal of the transistor Q4 <laughs> our transistor Q4 will be in on state and when the transistor Q4 will be in on state I will get the saturation voltage and its collector and emitter terminal will act like closed switch so I will get 0.2 volt in practical case or if I consider the ideal case I will get 0 volt for so for the input of 1 1 output is 0 okay that's it thank you